things like that also exciting. Um, additionally, you know, that's only in the in the hope for a bow start, but we're going to see in just a few seconds if that is the case. I can tell you that it will not be a sword start as Uncle is walking out of Link's house with nothing in hand. Yep, hiding whatever he's going to have, so we'll see in just a few seconds what it is going to be. Yeah, it's a dark and stormy morning here. Get a real early map check here on Christos Owen's side. Uh, seeing some red crystals here in the light world, that's a very nice thing potentially for the runners. Uh, looks like we have red crystal up on Tower of Hera, blue crystals at the other two. This is what I saw, but it was very quick, so I might be mistaken. Yeah, it was very quick. I, that's what I thought I saw, but oh, looks like it's going to be the bomb start. Yeah, so bombs to begin with slows things down a little bit right off the bat, but means that we're not going to have to worry about uh, that bomb and the escape. And that boomerang that they just picked up as well actually makes the bomb start a little bit easier. You could stun some of these guards in order to help your bombs uh, land. Uh, additionally, uh, makes things just, just a little bit safer as you're making your way through this escape sequence. Yeah, as well as especially like the hardest monster to kill with the bomb, that rat at the end. Boomerang makes that very easy. Yeah, so if you're going to get bomb starts, it's nice to get some kind of weapon that can either stun or an additional uh, damaging thing like a hookshot could also be helpful, but can't ask for much better. And both runners are pretty much neck and neck as they hit this first blue guard sequence. Christos doesn't. He's running out of bombs here. Trying to get that second hit on that blue guard. Used up quite a few extra bombs there. Down to six to Ganagon's Wild's eight. Yeah, a little bit of difficulty there. We'll see what happens. Yeah, and that plays a role. It's going to reduce the amount of uh, safety he has. As well, you're going to want to make sure you have... It's always nice to have a few extra bombs on the way out of the escape to make your pathway through Kakariko Village a little bit easier. Again, it's gone wild getting a perfect setup here on the second blue guard. And picks up that uh, fairy in a bottle here. And Crystal opting for some suicide strats there. Yeah, that's a little bit concerning for him. Uh, gonna be able to pick up some health here in the dungeon areas, provided he can make it to those pots without aggroing this green guard. Uh, there's a possibility that that he might have gotten trouble there, but turns out it's okay. He's got some health and he's gonna be able to throw some pots at this ball and chain guard. Yep, and then things in Zelda's chest, we just get a big 20. So with just three bombs to get that last rat, it could be tricky on Christos' side. If he gets another bomb pickup, that would help make things a little easier. Now, of course, if you're unaware, if you did happen to run out of bombs, if you're ever playing Link to the Past randomizer with standard randomized openings, uh, you can, in fact, die and get a bomb replenishment at any point during the sequence, it uh, obviously is not conducive to going fast. And so in a race situation like this, that's not what you want to do. But there is always a way out. Yeah, and that was changed like right away quickly after V29 came out because of soft locks. They did a lot of that to avoid soft locking, especially for the tournament. Mm -hmm. But I think Crystals is planning on using the boomerang to go for the rat as well so he doesn't have to worry about that since he pulled that out pretty much immediately after grabbing Zelda. Yeah, that seems to be his plan. It'll be interesting to see if Ganon changes changes to the boomerang as well just to make things a little bit easier through this dark side of the escape sequence. Weaving between those ropes there. Mm 
Yeah, ropes a little bit nicer to Christos. Oh, what's a map in the key font? That means every other chest in here, including the sanctuary chest, is going to hold something. Whether it's a value, we don't know, but it will be something. Oh, wrong rat on getting gone wild slide. Yep, gets away. Crystal's using that boomerang. And as a result, oh. gets suicided, but has a fairy in a bottle. So, slows things down, but does... Oh, and Christos actually loses one of his bombs there. Down to zero, getting into the back of escape sequence, but is going to be able to successfully check these items. All right, we get a quake medallion out of there. Yeah, not exactly what uh, you hope to find in this scenario, but yeah, better than nothing, I suppose. Can't use it until you have a sword, and uh, it isn't really that useful until, unless you need it for a dungeon instance. And six minutes, 20 seconds with the bomb start. On Christos' side, picks up the fire rod as a reward, so with half magic, half of half of a magic bar, sorry, uh, at least have a little bit of weaponry to, to make use of in this next part. Yeah, thankfully really no monsters to really kill until we get to about mini Moldorm caves, so thankfully you have plenty of time to look for a weapon. Christos grabbing this tree, hoping for bombs. Gets arrows. Oops, so a tier 2 tree pull arrows. We'll find out what the bush crab is. Just some hearts. Meanwhile, again, it's gone wild. It's going to go ahead and forego the check here on the lumberjack ledge. Uh, instead, heading right into the Lost Woods. And Christos lets us see that that is an armor upgrade. So blue mail sitting up there on the ledge right now. Yeah, so probably not going to see, might not even see any mail upgrades, but we'll find out. Yeah, and just a rupee there at the mushroom spot. And a big 20 down there in Bandit's Hideaway. Yeah, and one thing that might play just a little bit, just a little bit of a time difference potentially in Kakariko, Ganon's God Wild has one bomb, so he could go into Blind's Hut, and if he finds bombs in there, uh, especially if it's behind the bomb of a wall, he'll be good for the rest of Kakariko Village, whereas Christos has no bombs at all. He would have to go buy some bombs first. Mm -hmm. Christos picking up uh, big mana pots off that next tree pull that he pulled out in uh, the Lost Woods there replenishing up that mana bar so he can make more use of that fire rod if he needs to. He's going to head down towards the bomb shop right off the bat. Meanwhile, Ganon's Gone Wild picks up three more bombs, so going to be able to take care of business here in Kakariko Village in the normal order of things. Oh, and bombs in the back of the tavern too, so don't even need to buy bombs quite yet. Ten arrows in the back of Blind's Hut, and a piece of heart at Sick Kid. Sick Kid shouldn't be giving us his heart. He might need that. Yeah. All right, and Crystal's going to check the well first, and find ten arrows first in the well. We'll see what's behind the wall. Synchronized checks here, basically. Five bomb capacity upgrade here in the back section of the well. Uh, the hammer. Yeah, now there's a great item to locate. Uh, it's starting to look like a pretty dry Kakariko village, but that hammer opens up some additional locations. It's part of the way to Dark World access, which feels really good. And a sword there at the bottle vendor. So a couple of great melee weapons here out of Kakariko to go along with that fire rod and boomerang, so we're fairly well equipped for the next middle section of the early part of the game. 
Yeah, definitely. But as far as like progression in Light World or anywhere we can go, nothing actually really opened up so far. Yes, not yet. So we're going to probably see what uh, I would call the standard opening sequence heading down to the uh, maze game. And once finished there, going to the Lake Hylia area, Mini Moldorm Cave, probably going over to Ice Rod Cave and checking out the dam. Alright, so yeah, map check on Ganon Gun Wild. Confirm that we got uh, number six crystals up on Hera. Have the one on Eastern, we got the blue pendant on Desert. Crystals with his last check is he's actually not going to buy any bombs, it looks like. Yeah, going to go ahead and just deal with the three. Now, that's not too, too bad. In the worst case scenario, and he goes to open Mini Moldorm Cave, Ice Rod Cave, and maybe even Agonist Cave, sees the cane there up on the ledge in the library. So, boots likely going to be necessary to, to progress through this game. Yeah, very high likelihood we're going to need some boots. There is a small chance that we might not need that Cane of Samaria, but... We need to be... Misery Mine or Turtle Rock would both need to be pendants with nothing... Well, nothing inside Turtle Rock and nothing needed that's on Vitreous, as well as the Big Key cannot be on the right side behind the switch on Ganon's Tower. So, just a small likelihood that that won't be necessary, but I would imagine, in the grand scheme of things, that that won't be how this seed plays out. Yeah, probably not. We'll find out, because I'm sure once we get to Dark World, we're going to get a map check in. We'll find out right away at that point if we're going to need boots. Both runners now giving us a look at what's been sitting under the water. It's just the Bloomerang. One Bloomerang is more than enough. Yep, both runners opt to skip it. I think Crystal's giving us some information there as far as stun prize. It looked like it was 20 rupees. Yeah, and that's actually potentially incredibly important. Uh, good way to farm in certain areas for money. Uh, and since both of the players are actually light on the rupees at this point, might become important for Zoro waterfall money later on. With the bow. Whoa, followed and up by the mirror whoa. and then the flute! Wow, a piece of heart to go along in silver and arrows. Silver. Okay, I, I think this is the hype cave of the seed at this point. <laughs> Yeah, now that changes some things immediately. Christos going to go over and activate that flute. Does not uh, hesitate at all. Ganon's Gone Wild, on the other hand, is saying, you know what? Let's keep this trend up. I'm going to go over to Ice Rod Cave, and I bet you it'll be something even better. Um, yeah, potentially, but as far as hype, that. yeah, I'm, I'm giving that 11 out of 10 at that point. Yeah, that was as great a cave as you could ever have literally everything in there was useful even that full heart container when they were down we were only at four hearts uh you do want a little bit of health for safety's sake so not a bad uh not a bad find yeah especially as you can see on gan gone wild side those crabs do that two hearts of damage on green mail that's yeah. no joke that was close call now let's see if this actually pays off for Gans Gone Wild. Just 20 rupees, so Christos Owen's not going to be in trouble for having immediately skipped out of checking Ice Rod Cave. Now, to be fair, with the flute activated, he can always head over there relatively easily uh, since it is just a flute to aid away, basically. Yeah, I think that's what he might have been thinking about. It's really easy just to flute to aid. But we're gonna he's going to go up to Death Mountain first. Yeah, Which actually, and... we have access to everything up here on the light side. Yeah, with the hammer and the mirror, 
we can get the entire light side taken care of. He's also going to sequence break the old man here just to get that save and quit. You know, goes hand in hand with having the flute. Being able to save and quit to the mountain cave uh, is just a lot quicker. You know, it saves a few seconds every single save and quit. Meanwhile, Ganscon Wild's going to go ahead and do Eastern Palace for us. It's a crystal dungeon that's fully completable. And grabs a, another bottle, this one with a B in it, and actually decides, you know what, I'll save Eastern Palace for later. I got better places to go. Yeah, probably thinking about that flute. And, you know, following the logic as far as what you found really feels like it is pushing you up here just because the flute, with the flute, hammer, mirror, it, this whole thing, and even hair is completely open, even if we got to go to the basement because we already have the fire rod too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Eastern Palace, of course, still behind some dark rooms, though easily easily navigable by players at this level. It is still out of sequence, and so sometimes you just feel like you you know you better follow what the game is telling you. Yeah. Also, you know, Christos might be thinking he has the mirror with the hammer and the bow. Might just want to. He might be thinking of saving it so he can do that pod eastern combo that you were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna so head into Tar Hera. Yeah, 16 minutes, six, 16 and a half minutes in, already in our first crystal dungeon, and it's a five-six crystal at that. Uh, so great find. It turns out uh, basement might likely to be required here. We picked up that key early on. Yeah, that's not what you want to see down there. Yep. Although I suppose finding it early is better than later. Five bomb capacity upgrade means, hey, it's time to head to the basement. Looks like it'll be a little bit of a coffee break. Well, I would say coffee break, but this is crystals we're talking about. So, you know, he's going to have a tea break. Gets that secured. Meanwhile, Gad's gone wild, just following up in the same path, rescuing old man now. Yep, makes it through the dark room with no problem. And the tea break is almost over. So one item left here in Tower of Hera, as Christus is going to make his way up, knocking these beetles into the pit. And Ganon's gone wild right behind him, just going to come into Hera and he'll get his coffee break. Or that dead rock will do dead rock things. That's a game over. Unfortunate there. He's luckily able to go right to that mountain cave. Meanwhile, Crystal Zone's going to try for this bomb jump. Gets it. First try. Picks up the second item here of Tower of Hair, which was a hard piece. And is on his way up to fight Trollborn. Yep, and I'm guessing we're probably going to see some hammer strats out of him at this point. Yeah, I tried to get uh, that bumper clip there. Got a little hung up on that hole in the ground and chose instead to forego that shortcut. Took the safe path. Making very quick work of Troll Dorm. Kits the yeah. compass, but the most important part is that's crystal. Yeah, 19 minutes, 28 seconds, grabs that crystal. First one of the race early on is always a nice feeling. You always think to yourself, well, I'm on a good pace. Got a crystal in my pocket. Bunch of checks already planned out ahead of time, knowing that he's got all of East Death Mountain to, to take a look at.
floating out with just a piece of heart there. Yep, now, uh, taking a long walk down Spiral Cave, nothing for it. Can't can't do anything about this. Uh, it's going to allow for him to walk back up Paradox Cave. If he finds anything of value, like hookshot and uh, lift upgrades, he'll be able to do Dark Side of... Uh, or perhaps even Super Bunny Cave. Yeah, we'll need to find at least two lift upgrades. That would be pretty stacked here. Well, the way this seed is going, it could possibly happen. 300 rupees here is actually well wanted. Uh, puts him very close to that Zora money. Yeah, and that stun prize was the 20 rupees then. Really easy to get it, sitting at 481. Cannon's gone wild, finishes his coffee break, about to get his big key and take the trick up Tower of Hera. And we start the first of seven checks here in Paradox Cave. Just a fighter shield and 20 rupees. So we've crossed that 500 rupee threshold. And I'm sorry to say there's really no way that this could be as hyped, but picks up a sword and the Titan Power Glove. Yeah. And then some okay. love along the way next to bombs. But still, pretty good. Yeah, that's that's our Dark World access at that. Oh, no, not yet. We still yeah, need... We still need that Moon Pearl. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Means places we haven't seen so far are... Agonis Cave and Eastern. Absolutely true. And uh, they can get to Zora, King Zora, at this point. Uh, Crystal's heading to the Dark World. Yeah, this is an interesting play here. Not sure what the plan is as a bunny. Whoops! <laughs> it's like, oops, I need the Moon Pearl. Oh! See, even the great ones can make mistakes. And Christos is now going to head into Eastern Palace and Saharshala's area. Yep, I'm going to hit Eastern first. More than likely, our progression is here. Yeah, this is. I the... guess. I'll go ahead. Yeah, we, we've already seen Saharshal's hut, so there's three items available here in Eastern Palace. All of them except the ones on our most nights are in logic, if there is something on our most night. There's just the one item in Nagina's cave. Well, also the vanilla big key chest, depending on where we find, which there's the big key, but... But um, one location that actually did open up with what we found on Death Mountain was Zora. Mm -hmm. Five arrow capacity upgrade is one of the items here at uh, Eastern Palace. Yeah, so two more chests are, that are not locked by the lamp so far. We'll see if all the items were within logic or if some of its sequence broken. And I mean, potentially, this could be an Agassi too if we find something like the lamp. is almost the last thing you'd like to find. Here's a map, so that doesn't help. Nope, so one more chest. We'll see if anything is... We know that at least one item is locked behind the lamp, but we'll see what this is. Ooh, Compass. So two items left here. One of them is on Armos Knight, so Christmas is going to make the sequence break call here. And I can't fault him for it. You're already here. You might as well do it. They are not the hardest of dark rooms at all. And with the fire rod, it's actually easier to do the 
um, Igor room on the way to Armos Knights than these rooms. Yeah, just face to the right and fire a fire shot, or even just walking into the room, you can fire two of them and hit the torch right in front of you. So fairly, you know, it's a logic break, but if it pays off and gives you Dark World access, then I don't think you're going to be upset at all. No, not whatsoever. Those are just some bombs. So as far as locations then, right now that we don't know of, Armos Knights, Zora, and Egana are the current locations. Yeah, absolutely. So we're starting to dwindle down. There we see what happens. You just grab that uh, fire rod out, shoot it off to the side, and there is now light. Ganscon Wild is playing the same game as Christos, just behind a little bit. Yep, and Christos heading in an Armos Knights fight. Don't blink while he does this fight or you're going to miss it. So 20 rupees doesn't help. Christos still has to go check Saharshala's hut. Ganon's God Wild does not need to do so when he finishes up with the Eastern Palace checks. Yeah, but we'll see, because we know Saharshala doesn't have anything that we need for progression, so it's either got to be Zora or Agana that has our progression right now. Now, I'm going to be curious to see if Ganon goes into the money room here in Eastern Palace. It's often uh, skipped, but contains 90 rupees, so enough to get above that 500 cap there. We'll have to see if he's paying attention to his financial situation as he gets to that point. Yeah, we'll see. And we'll see. I'm guessing pulling the flute out of crystals is... I'm guessing he's going to head to Egg, and it's probably quicker to check than Zora. Yeah, he's also going to get information here on what's on the ledge at desert and it is the flippers so if he does need to swim at some point he's gonna need to get access to uh desert palace before that maybe egg in his cave has the book oh, that would be a great find Just a bottle. Yep, just a bottle. So that means Zora is holding progression. And now it's curious. Do you bother trying to sequence break up just to get under Hobo as well? And then swim up to Zora? Since it looks like Christos is taking... Oh, he's got Ice Rod Cave to yeah, check as well. He, he hasn't checked Ice Rod Cave, so he'll check that first. Um, we'll see after that. I mean, being here, he might just fake Flipper to Hobo, but more than likely at this point, he knows that Zora is going to have some kind of important item. Where he's about to find out at least in just a few seconds, it's possible in his mind that something is to be found here. Just 20 rupees though, so not what you would hope for. Um, S. Belmont, right now, I mean, progression could be on the pyramid, but not current progression. We would still need to find a lamp. Yeah, the lamp is missing, so something of value is at Zora's Waterfall. Christos takes the fake flipper. And we'll be checking Hobo just in case. 
now. Yeah, I'm thinking he thinks I'm in the area, and at this point, there's really nothing more for me in this area. So instead of leaving the one location kind of by itself. And Ganis Gone Wild does take that trip into the money room here. Hobo throws a full heart container at Christos. Yep, probably not going to say no to that. Their heart count's still a little low, and they're going to be going green mail into Dark World, so always a welcome sight to see a heart container. So let's see. Now, without the, without the Moon Pearl, we can't get uh, water walking out of this part and check the, the cave there, so it's just a straight check to Zora. Yeah, we'll see what's on Zora's ledge to see if we're going to need to come back here with those flippers that are sitting on the desert ledge, though. Probably not, though, with the heart container. Ganon's gone wild, makes very quick work of the Armos Knights himself, picks up his second crystal. And we'll see where he decides to go after this. See if he checks Egg in his cave first, or comes to Zora first. Yeah, he can make up some time if he goes right to Zora first. So let's see, what do you have for us, King Zora, today? It is the Moon Pearl! So there goes... Access to the Dark World. Takes care of that Aga required seed for us. Yep, Aga no longer required. Oh, chat. Sad it wasn't the lantern. And now, Christos, it's okay for you to go look for Hype Cave. You do have everything you need this time. Of course, I would be very surprised if Hype Cave is even remotely hypey after that mini Moldorm cave, so... Yeah, I, I don't know how Hype Cave could actually compare to that. There's a map check. We've got Green Pendant Thieves, Red Pendant up on Turtle Rock with Crystal 5 at Ice Palace. Yeah, so Kane definitely required for that Misery Mire. And Hype Cave... Trying to make us excited. Pulls a uh, 20 rupees. It's not the way to start. Well, Titan's mix okay. not a bad find. Bugged at an ice rod. Okay, um not too I mean, bad. Yeah, not not too bad. Not not even close to mini moldorm still, but it's, it's still pretty hype. Yeah, with Turtle Rock as a pendant though, that ice rod isn't really that great of a find. Uh, may have some sway in things if it is a required uh, something on Trinex, which would kind of be awful, but certainly nice to have it. You don't have to worry about it. And Christos is electing to go right to the dark side of Death Mountain here uh, to check out Super Bunny Cave. Yeah, that's really all he can check over here, Super Bunny Cave. Yeah, without the uh, hookshot, he can't even, or the boots, he can't even get one item in Hookshot Cave. He might be also thinking, well, you know, checking Turtle Rock's medallion as well, because as far as, like, if you see Quake this early, we're actually really only the Cane of Samaria and... I think that's, you know, Cane of Samaria, and if this is Quake, that's all we're really missing to get to Pedestal being within Logic. Yeah, that is true. Also, that's if uh, Desert is not boots locked. Well, and, and uh, Lantern. Oh yeah, we would need Lantern too. So, Chad is asking, no, the, the move pearl was in logic. Getting to Zora is possible with their loadout. They just took a shortcut, so to speak, 
to get there. This this chick was available to them. They have the gloves, so they could have walked the long route. Yep, from the witch's hut. And there's blue mail, so we will see a mail upgrade. Just highly doubt we're going to see the red mail. It is Quake at Turtle Rock. No. Nice to know. Hopefully you don't need to know that. But... I think it's, you know, I think it's just that knowledge, because that just plays a huge factor in this. Knowledge, knowledge and randomizer is power. Absolutely agree. Uh, Christos is going to go up to the Dark World here. I would imagine it's going to take care of Skull Woods, uh, since that is a fully completable crystal dungeon. Um, so chat asking what could be on the pedestal that's required. At this point, I think the only thing that can be on pedestal is Misery Myers Medallion if it's not Quake. Or Hookshot could be there. Uh, yeah, and then anything else that could be there would be like a fetch quest. Stumpy's only going to have a big 20 for us. Mm, getting slightly different checks here, which is... I like to see. K45 is available, so... I like this. I actually like Gan and Gone Wild's path here. With the Titan's Mitts, able to go all the way through the south up into uh, Village of Outcasts. So, very um, efficient route here. One day, someone will shoot these Gibdos with the, with their silver arrows. Yeah, I think I would, just because of how much they always love to get in the way. So, six rupees short on Dig Game for Ganon's Gone Wild, unfortunately. Christos gets a full heart container out of uh, Skull Woods, and I believe that was actually the Sank Heart, because his health was refilled. Yep, that was the Sank Heart. Cannon's gone wild, going to grab Jeremiah the Frog. Man, I really hope he gets five rupees on the way out here so he can go to dig game. If he chooses to uh, take the purple chest, though, he'll have to wait until he's done with it because that digger does not like it when you have a follower. And I think if he takes the purple chest, he's going to end up just fluting with his current path because there's no reason to walk at this point. Uh, Hammer Pet Cage doesn't pay off, just five rupees down there. Of course, that's the exact amount he needed. Didn't take it, though. Yeah, but he is going to end up spending 10 rupees here. Crystal starts his Mothula fight. Okay, there's the rupees he needs for the digging game. And down goes Mothula. Yeah, and he's actually going to elect to leave the purple chest. Gonna check the Village of Outcast area. We'll see what's here. And 
Okay, Crystals, instead of going to Village Vault Cast, actually going to check the Mire area. Yeah, I like this. I like the overworld checks that are available, and he can pick up those flippers as well. Yeah, I and think that's what he's thinking about. Yeah, season Ether Medallion is required for entrance to Misery Mire. Finds the lantern here in Mire Shed. Yep, so done no with more dark words. Meanwhile, Gans Gone Wild picks up that Tempered Sword out of Thieves Town. So Pendant Thieves Town paying off just uh, in the fact that you get that Tempered Sword out of it. So it could be very helpful. I'm sure Gans Gone Wild, after the uh, situation in the last race between these two players, is happy to see that Bacon Sword. Yeah, probably. And it'll be interesting to see if he finds three items here in the front. If he decides to continue and just clear the dungeon, since it is a Pendant. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's the big key, so... Nope, two items, so he looks like he's going to continue then. Yeah, Christos is going to head into Palace of Darkness, it seems. So, this seed really did open up into a lot of uh, potential places for the runners to check in, so these two divergent paths uh, provides lots of opportunities for us to have a runner get an advantage on the opponent, uh, and makes for an exciting race. Yeah, definitely when you can get this much just difference in routes. Yeah, it makes things hard to judge until until something big happens, like a very specific item being found or or they meet up again and resynchronize at some point. Yeah, especially, you know, finding the lamp too, that means, you know, no dark room, so this dungeon's completely within logic at the point. Right now, I think we're just looking for. Let's see, we need Ether, Samaria, and Boots. I think that's actually all we need for Go Mode at this point. And a hookshot. Oh, yeah, hookshot too, that's right. Unless we're going to be hovering through Ganon's Tower. Well, still we need hookshot because we got to go through Swamp Palace. Well, that is true, yes. Crystal's heading down to check the vanilla big key chest. And surprise, Palace of Darkness here in the front and you find a key. There's the big key though. Gen's Gone Wild has not found a key, which tells us that the big key chest is out of play here in Thieves Town. In fact, the key for it will be located inside the big key chest. Blind will have to have an item. Yeah, or potentially nothing, because I'm not sure if they found the compass or the map. I don't know if they have all dungeon items yet. I know they found the compass because that was in the front. Yeah, I'm not sure if we saw the map then. Yeah. More keys over here on Christos' side as he's getting ready to head to the back part of Palace of Darkness. Meanwhile, Gans Gone Wild has a really nice blind fight there. Takes down blind, picks up that big 20. So green pendant might come into play. It's not a bad thing to find if you have to take a pendant down. Uh, that's the dungeon you want to go to. 
Yeah, which could be important. Nothing, you know, only the Tempered Sword was actually there, which, you know, helps on the Ganon fight as well as, you know, other bosses compared to Master Sword. But, you know, when he makes the trek over to the pod area, that could be pretty huge uh, if Sahashal ends up having something, because it might be a while before we see crystals come to Thieves' Town. Go and do uh, Skullwitz. We know that we won't find any progression related items there. Christos, on the other hand, is heading to the basement part of Palace of Darkness, where he's likely to find some keys. Two keys, so he's gonna check the harmless hellway then, because we're gonna have something there. And I believe Helmosaur will actually have an item now, too. Gone Wild finishes the front part of Skull was going to head to the middle part and check the chest behind the switch. Where you really wish you had the Samaria. No, he's never minding that switch. He's going to go right to the boss. Yeah, I'm not sure. Don't rem I don't think there was actually an item, or that was the heart piece, or the heart container. No, that was the heart container, so he's going to end up coming back. Yeah. yeah, so at this stage, we know we're going to find the boots because we need them for the cane. Hookshot has to be located, and Ether Medallion, and that's all we absolutely need for Go Mode. Yep, Boots, Hookshot, much Boots lead to Samaria, we already know where they are, and Ether, so really only looking for three items at this point. Crystal's heading into the King Helmosaur fight. And gets no movement on Helmosaur, so one silver arrow, and down he goes. Just a quiver upgrade, so nothing inside a pod. Now that's a long dungeon to have nothing progression. But crystals are good. Gan has gone wild. Takes a death here on Mothula. I believe that's a game over again. Yep. Hit those spikes, you know. That's the second one of this race. Yep. Probably is, you know, when he gets through a nice full magic up there, but probably is going to wish when he gets to that chest that's holding the Sankar wishes he would have went to get that. Christos is going to check Waterfall of Wishing. Yeah, now that he has the flippers, let's go ahead and grab these two items. 50 rupees and a shovel, so opportunity to fetch quest. Yep, our first fetch quest. Mm, 
choosing to go to Ice Palace. I like it. I mean, this dungeon could technically be hookshot locked, where, you know, you'd have to do the bomb jumps, but technically, you know, still can easily full clear if you know the bomb jumps. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's the other, the 5-6 crystals. Yeah, additionally, there is a way for, if the keys are laid out in a specific way, you can actually bypass that second scary bomb jump. Yes. All right, Ganon's Gone Wild does get Mothula down this time. Let me find some map in that first chest. Oof, getting getting mirror bonked here a couple of times. Just things not going their way today. So now the question is, where is Ganon's Gone Wild going to head? Looks like we might see Bumper Cave check and then the... Nope. Changing minds. I'm gonna go grab that purple chest. Yep, purple chest. We'll see. So interestingly enough here, Christos has no bombs, so can't make use of bomb jumps. Gonna have to go the traditional route through Ice Palace. Yeah, and without Samaria as well, that means if he wants to finish it, he's gonna have to do it the complete way it was intended to. Yeah, it's not something you see all that often. That's our first item so far. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's also true. Unless we find the hook shot in here, or some bombs at some point, the crystals won't be able to get to the big chest if there's an item in there. Yeah, it's really uncomfortable. Not having bombs is... It's one of those things you can sometimes take for granted. You just expect that you'll have them. But it didn't look like anything was important on Graveyard Ledge, so Ganon's Gone Wild gonna go turn the purple chest in. Yeah, and with Palace of Darkness not paying off, and Ice Palace not paying off at this time... Ooh, we're starting to run out... ...of places to check. Ganon's Gone Wild now heading down to the Misery Mire area. Yeah, I'm trying to think where we have that's within logic at this point. Uh, I don't think either, either neither one has checked Pyramid Catfish. Uh, technically, the front part of Swamp Palace is open. Uh, nobody's been inside desert. Uh, there could potentially be something inside desert, depending on locations of keys. As well, we haven't turned in our green pendant from Saharshala yet. 
That is true. So, lots of little one off locations all around the world. And it's gone wild. It's going to pick up these flippers. And maybe cross his fingers on there being some acquirable items here in Desert Palace. Yeah, and we'll find out if Desert is boots locked. Uh, we're about to find out, and it looks like Desert Palace is boots locked because we had a heart container. Oof. So, yeah, so we know Desert's not the place, so either one of the, you know, Pyramid, Catfish, Green Pendant, or Swamp. I think that's pretty much all we have at this point. Yep. Checkerboard Cave just has that 20 rupees in it, so... Crystals finally has some bombs. You got an 8-bomb drop there. Yeah, that's kind of a pleasant benefit there to sticking to Ice Palace. Is Ganon gone? Ganon's gone wild? Oh, nope, okay. I thought he was about to make the Ice Palace play himself. I uh, got a, their fire shield. Yeah, in so Ice that, Palace. I think finishes up Ice Palace's goodies. I believe that was three items. Uh, yeah, I believe you're right. There was a heart container or a piece of heart earlier on. We haven't had Dig Game yet. Uh, both runners have picked up the shovel now. Oh, yeah, that's true. Dig not spot. Dig Game, Dig Spot. That is true. We saved money by getting a B. Oh, nope, we still have an item, because we've got all the dungeon items, it looks like, so might be something in this big chest. Another heart container. And now again, it's going to show us what's going on here for the dig spot. Three hundred rupees. Not what they want. Not at all. And it looks like it's off to Palace of Darkness for again it's gone wild now. Yeah, and we'll see if that green pendant bring it off. Yeah, I imagine along the way it's gonna turn green pendant. Or it might not do so until after. We'll have to see. I mean, we have them here, so it's fairly straightforward. You're going to have to walk past it. Yep, hasn't pulled the mirror out yet, so we'll see. Oh, so yeah. Crystals actually can't finish this dungeon. He's... Short a key, it looked like. Well, he can go in now and, yeah. and use the bomb jump. Yeah, he'll have to do the bomb jump now, so. And Saharshala just has the Bombos medallion, so not the one they want. Nope, uh, so major item, but nothing needed for this seed. Yeah. So we're looking at a place like uh, Swamp Palace at this point. Hookshot is Swamp Palace, perhaps? Yeah, or, yeah, at this point, um, Pyramid Catfish. Pyramid, Pyramid Catfish as well, yeah. I mean, we, I mean, Crystals might go check, and this might be what he's thinking, too. After finishing Ice Palace, he might head to and do the Fat Fairy route in Pyramid and Catfish while he's doing that. But I believe uh, Pyramid Fairy is out of logic right now. I think this is a considered a Samaria Lock dungeon, if I'm not mistaken.
Crystals gets that jump at pretty much the last possible chance. He's gonna have four attempts for the second bomb jump here. Oh. Forced to make use of spin attacks. Can't afford to use any bombs. Yeah, and he gets, thankfully he gets two of those hearts too. Actually no, he shouldn't have to do another bomb jump. Oh yeah, he'll have it opened up so he can. Yep, so Crystal's gonna head down to Cold Stair. Ganon's got a while, just working his way through Pod. Yeah, and after completing this many dungeons, this will be the fifth Crystal dungeon for Crystal Zoan. Uh, gonna have to start looking at some of these pendant dungeons for progression. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where he goes, because he hasn't even touched the Village of Outcast area just yet. So, I mean, that might look more, you know, more opportunity than going into a hookshotless Swamp Palace. Yeah, at this stage, I would anticipate he'll do Thieves Town, uh, simply because he has to do Village of Outcasts, as well as you said. Uh, it's a green pendant, and that is an additional count, so that's five items there. So yeah, Christos gets his fifth crystal off to drop in Cold Star. So we'll see what he does first. I, I think he's going to do Fat Fairy first, though, because that's the only thing that would make sense is why you come to Ice Palace. Now, but as uh, chat's starting to point out, that puts Pyramid Fairy behind a logic break. Yes, it's um, behind it's, Samaria. It's behind Cane of Samaria or Hookshot. Um, no, I think in this oh, yeah, case it's still that. Samaria based mm -hmm. because you, with the way the keys were laid out and Colster having a key, even having Hookshot, you would have needed Samaria to hold that switch down. Right, because you would have had to have done the initial bomb jump, yeah. So yeah, could potentially find Ether or Hookshot. That would be the major thing we're looking for in here. Right, and the Hookshot find might be good because it could bring you to chests in Palace of uh, the Swamp Palace where there may be boots. There aren't yeah. very many other locations that could have boots. Obviously Catfish is still a wide open pyramid ledge here could potentially be the place. Yeah, and it kind of seems like Hookshot, I think Crystals would go to Swamp Palace, just because it kind of seems like the way he's playing is if I can go into a Crystal Dungeon, clear it, I'm heading there right now. What? Pyramid Ledge, just a piece of heart. Uh, Pyramid Fairy, just paying out in rupees. We see the catfish check. Not saving, quitting, or marrying back to the light world, so I think that that is on docket. Yeah, yeah, that's got to be what he's doing. Yeah, uh, right now, Hookshot Cave is not within logic. We would still need to, need to find boots before that becomes the first chest accessible. Floating Island, we have seen it. I believe it's just uh, an armor upgrade. No, armor upgrade was in Aga for Lumberjack House. So, 
catfish provides the hook shot. Hook shot. So that's as good a find as you can ask for uh, in this situation with the sequence currently uh, such as it is. Swamp Palace definitely a place to go next. Yep, Fully and that's ex and that's exactly where he's going. So we need the boots and we need an ether medallion. Boots will lead yep. us to Kane and Samaria. Ether medallion is what is necessary to open up Misery Mire. And then we'll be done. Yeah, and I think if you're a runner right now and you're paying attention to that, you want to find ether first. Because yeah. that means you do not have to dive Turtle Rock whatsoever. Yeah, if they find uh, the boots... It could mean that Turtle Rock is required to get that Ether Medallion. Uh, and it would really just open up an awful lot of area to check. Um, question in chat about Pedestal. Yes, Ether can still be on Pedestal. That is the only thing, or a fetch quest to Ether. Um, that's all that's left for Pedestal hype, though. Just a map in this first chest. And part of it, you have to kind of be wondering how Christos is feeling about his position as, you know, for as long as he took Inside Ice Palace. Yeah, I think it, it, it wouldn't be too far of a stretch for him to think that he feels behind. Uh, didn't get anything great out of Ice Palace. Hookshot available at Catfish for quite some time, but never really was a opportunity for either runner to check there. Um, that was a natural game. Oh, no. I'll take another death here. Uh, really just struggling with this seed. And that's a long walk back to Helmasar King. Yeah, it is, unfortunately. But of course, Ganon's Gone Wild doesn't know that he's in as as far of an advantage as he has. Uh, the only plus side for him is that, you know, Hookshot doesn't necessarily speed up any of the things that he's done. Yeah, and I think, you know, the best thing for him, and we'll see if it happens when he finishes... Palace of Darkness would be to immediately check Pyramid Catfish and find his hook shot. Because the place where he can gain time right now would be, you know, we know nothing's required from Ice Palace would be a go mode Ice Palace. So, you know, getting hook shot and heading right to Swamp Palace after that. Mm -hmm. Now, Christos is going full left side for a shot. Yeah, which I don't blame him. You're still looking for, you know, two items. Typically, the, you know, the skip left side initial go is if you're looking for that one item, and then if you don't find it, you come back in. Yeah, but there is still lots of race left, ladies and gentlemen, so just because Game has Gone Wild seems to be behind at this point, uh... A trolley final item could spell disaster for one of these runners. Yeah, I mean, you can even look to the first game where Christos was behind by, you know, 10 minutes. And, you know, at that point, especially late in the race, you're going to think that's over. It really doesn't matter who's going against who, but ended up coming back. So can't count anybody out until they the game is over. Let's try Helmsar King again. And this time, success. This time, nothing on left side of Swamp, though. Uh, 
Uh, for how many hookshot was at Catfish? I'm still missing the big key. Ganon's gone wild, did mirror and flute, so won't be checking Catfish. He might be going into Ice Palace himself. Into Ice Palace. So in for that treat of an Ice Palace. Has a lot more bombs than Christos did on the way in, though, so we'll likely not have that same kind of problem. There's the big key, followed by a piece of heart here in the basement. Christos is going back to check that big key chest. Yep, doesn't want to have to come back in. But, nope, never mind. Changed his mind. Well, that's, you know, the stair does end up eating you, but I was surprised for him just not to go back up. If he's keeping an item count, perhaps he realizes that there isn't... Oh, nope. He's gonna go back now. Yeah, but he's going back now. All that for 20 rupees. Just 20 bucks. <laughs> now he doesn't have to go and reset the uh, button there because he's already pushed the switch. So he can walk down this way. And I'm surprised not to see progression here in Swamp Palace, but we still have the Argus fight. Yep, still have that, and you know, Hookshot does open up Hookshot Cave as well, so that might have been what it's pointing to. Oh, which is a bummer, because it would have meant that you could have go moded this dungeon potentially, if that is the case. on the Argus Puffs. Yeah, probably wishes he had the Tempered Sword right now, but... And gets that one shot in with the Silver Arrow to take down Argus, collecting up the Magic Powder, so fetch quests, but also yep, a useful survivability item. Yep, definitely. Uh, the Tempered Sword was in Thieves Town. Yeah, I should stop con or complimenting runners every time I do. Things just change up. Ganon's gone wild, letting his couple of bees go. He's trying to get a fairy. Mm. This is a room you don't often see here in Ice Palace. No, but yeah, very rarely do you see this. Man, and catching bees. And I think, yeah, he ended up catching all the bees and picked up all the fairies. He ate the fairies. So Christos does his dig game, hadn't done that yet, sees that it's 300 rupees. Oh, 
Okay, he, I was like, oh no, he's not going to have magic, but that's right. He got the bombos, thankfully, from that green pendant. Mm. So it's going to be able to just make use of that to unleash Cold Stare. Yeah, and we'll probably, I'm guessing probably going to end up using some Fire Rod shots. Just because, you know, Green Mail, you do have Tempered Sword, but Cold Stare hits like a truck against Green Mail. Yeah. Oof, got bodied there pretty early on, too. Um, you can see he's all the way down to four hearts from full health. Well, and here's our chance at dig game. All right, one puff ball down. Just on your bucks. Two puff yeah. balls and three. Whew. That was close. Cold stare, giving it uh, a little bit of uh, worry there. Yeah, because you would think it's like four hearts. That's not clutching that fight. But when cold stare does four hearts of damage, yes, that is clutching that fight. Yeah, one one bump would have been all it would have taken. So Christmas. Ganon Wild has rescued the smith here and taking care of Gary's lunchbox. Christos still doing some of these overworld checks and here's where we see Ganon getting an opportunity to make some of a com somewhat of a comeback. But unless he goes to Catfish to pick up that hook shot, he's going to be out of luck. I think he's going to do the same thing. Yeah, I sincerely hope that he's heading up to Catfish with this with this check into the Dark World and not going to check for an early hookshot in Swamp Palace. Yeah, it looks like he's making that call. Yeah, because I think he's doing the same thing. Clear Ice Palace, get the 5-6 crystal, go to Pyramid since I haven't checked it yet, and then route Catfish in there. Meanwhile, Mad Batter did... Swamp Palace payoff in a big way. Let's find out in just a few seconds. Turns out it was a heart container, so oh. no. So that means Hookshot Cave. Yeah, That's... really crossing our fingers on Hookshot Cave. But yeah, interesting. You know, Christos went to the Village Wildcast area, but he still skipped it. Yeah, he hasn't done Thieves Town, uh, which may be a draw before Hookshot Cave. I don't know what his thought process is going to be. Floating away yet again. He's floating, or let's see. And he's going up the yep. mountain, so Hookshot yep. Cave is where he'll be looking. Yeah, which that's. I think that's all we have for progression, as far as we know right now. So we'll find something here. Yeah, and we can even predict that it, it's going to be boots, if it's going to be anything. Or Mushroom, I suppose, could fetch quest us into boots. I mean, it could even really be Ether. Because, I mean, it could be a force double dip in a mire. Yeah, that's possible as well. Oof, can you imagine? <laughs> Unfortunately, Ganon's Gone Wild looks like after checking the pyramid, he did not go check Catfish. He's going up Death Mountain himself. So he's going to just be able to check Super Bunny Cave. Yeah, maybe um, feeling loaded up for bear enough to deal with uh, Spike Cave. Uh, yeah, that's potential as well, but I don't know if he has any anything in his bottles right now. So, plus five bomb capacity upgrade is the first item out of Hookshot Cave. There's a ten bomb capacity upgrade. A piece of heart. And there they are, the boots. There. Located. So with okay. that, not exactly what Christos wanted to necessarily find right off the bat. 
uh, but does mean that he's going to be able to pick up that can of Samaria, go to um, go to Turtle Rock, to be honest. He can't get into. Or he could do Desert Palace if he wanted to. Uh, yeah, Desert Palace is open now, um, which he hasn't been there at all, but he could also check Boots Locked, um, like King's Tomb and Bonk, Rock, King's Tomb, yeah. Bonk Rocks, which I think that would be an idea before going into Turtle Rock. Ganon taking this opportunity to open up Turtle Rock. Not really going to go in there. Doesn't have any way to get anything. Right now, the reason why Ganon's gone wild more than likely isn't doing Spike Cave is he doesn't have Burna or Cape, but he doesn't have anything in his bottles either to be able to just kind of tank the damage. He doesn't have enough hearts to just walk through the entire thing. So Ganon gets that uh, mail upgrade. Not really what you want to find at that point. Christos now checking the King's Tomb location. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where he goes. If he doesn't find Ether, not in here, uh, where he's going to go, because at that point you've either got, you know, you can go to Desert or you can go to Turtle Rock. Yeah, now he has not dipped into Thieves Town or... Desert Palace yet. That's true. Bonk Rocks is his last hope before going into any of the Pendant Dungeons. Oh no, Scanning's Gone Wild is heading towards Swamp without the oh, shot. Just, just awful. And Christos now heading up the mountain again, so electing to check Turtle Rock first. Which, you know, I don't blame him whatsoever because you're looking at, you know, Desert Palace, well, quicker check. You're only looking at two potential items. Um, other than that, then you're looking at, you know, the six items that you have in Turtle Rock at this point, including the Mimic Cave. Mm -hmm. He's going to go ahead and make an attempt at Spike Cave. Yeah, he has at least a fairy in a bottle, so I believe he'll have enough to do this. Yeah, with hook shots, dashes, and the amount of hearts he has, he can tank this damage just straight up. Ooh, he might be able to do it without using that fairy. Whew. And Barely. is rewarded with a heart. But now it looks like he is going to make the play up to Turtle Rock. Yeah, now we know that it is not, that it has a chance to be the right play. Um, Thieves Town, of course, is not where you want to go at this point. Since Gen's Gone Wild has already gone in there. Desert Palace could potentially be the spot to check. We aren't aware of it yet. just spears that fairy with no regard to the fairy's life. Yeah. Do you think you eat a fairy? Is that how you get the health back? Are fairies just that delicious? I guess. I mean, that would, that would make the only explanation why you hookshot it, because if they need to be alive to get the health back, you're not going to hookshot it. Yeah, and since you use them up, the fairy is consumed, so... Maybe you just crush it all over your face? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. And actually, this is interesting to point out as well. We know there's nothing in Thieves Town that's required. But with what we found at this point, Pedestal is in play. There's potential that Ether's not in Desert Palace or Turtle Rock. That is absolutely true. And without the book to have checked, it is blind in this situation. So big key found right away in Thieves Town or in Turtle Rock. And 
the most interesting thing about it too, we already know one of the items in desert. So if we don't find any progression, there's a Only pretty <laughs> a, Yeah, there's a pretty good chance that it might be pedestal at that point then. But we gotta find six items first while we're in Turtle Rock, so Yeah. This is a long dungeon to go through. Uh, on a hope and a prayer. Now, pneumati numerically speaking, there's oh, ether. So numerically speaking, as I was about to say, it was far more likely that it was not a pedestal CEO. Christo's just going to go ahead and fill up his magic on the way out before leaving, and we are fully in go mode. Yep. At 1 hour, 25 minutes and 58 seconds, so a long time uh, considering the way that the seed started out, but... If he's lucky, he'll have a nice god mode misery mire. And this does mean that aside from that dip into Turtle Rock, that was the only pendant uh, action required. Yeah, that's true. Then we are going to get a frosty bird. Yep. Will he bird toss? I think it's right there at your feet. You kind of have to. It's breaking the rules if you don't. Oh, hammered. Oh, the disrespect. Yes. New, new, uh, meaning to the term hammer time. Very nice first room from Christos there. Getting that one cycle on those wizard ropes is very nice. Um, I go on scene. Question about Christos. He has not even been in Thieves Town yet. He's completely skipped it so far still. Which at this point he won't be going in there. And we get the single arrow in the first chest of Misery Mire. Cannon's gone wild doing his digging game. Still on the look for that hook shot at this point. He's running out of locations, so. Yeah, it hurts when it's at a place like Catfish that really has no easy way to route at this point. They've already checked Zora. They've done all of the all of the relatively easy connecting checks there. And when you don't have boots, it's even worse. If you have boots, at least you can kind of dash your way up there and it's not too awful. And I think he was thinking, it's like, where do I have to go? And at this point, I think really all he actually has at this point is Catfish. I think it's his last area. Yeah, Christos picking up half magic. There's the second item out of Misery Mire, you know. Certainly a great thing to pick up along the way here. It's going to make that Ganon's Tower climb a lot easier. Not to mention, it will make the Ganon fight. Well, no, I guess they've got Silver Arrows. Never mind. They don't need half magic for that. But he is on Master Sword, so... Yep, there's gonna, a gonna be decent chance... We're, yeah, decent chance we're going to see Master Sword Ganon. Still on the hunt for the big key, though. Oh, there it is. There it is, though. So we're no longer on the hunt for that. And with our both dungeon items done, we are on the way to Vitreus. So we'll forego the big key chest. Which is really the only spot left. And we'll see if we oh, grab a fairy there from that anti-fairy. Another one as well. And there's the hook shot for Ganon's Gone Wild. 
Throws a couple of bombs in after that catfish. He's clearly frustrated with this situation. Yeah, not so happy at all after finding that hook shot in the last possible place. But gonna go finish off Swamp Palace, and then at that point we'll see Hookshot. I'm sure he's gonna go to Hookshot Cave because that's really all he has. Get the boots, and we'll see how he runs it after that. Yeah, unfortunately for Christmas, not uh, performing any spooky action for us today. But still making very quick work. that dark room part of Misery Mire. Yep, and we're about to get to Vitrius, which is going to be a very quick fight. But Crystal, with the very quick kill on Vitreus, gets Crystal number seven. So, Crowzone, do you know what time it is? I believe that means it's time to play everyone's favorite game here in the chat. If you are a subscriber to any of the Speed Gaming family of channels, or you have donated 250 bits in support, you may enter a number between 1 and 22 here in the chat now where you believe the Ganon's Tower Big Key will be located. And should you be correct, you will get your name added to a leaderboard and be renowned across the lands. So, Sir Lot, where do you think Christos is going to find the Big Key today? I'm going to be really nice to them. It's going to be in chest number one. Chest number one. I myself thinking uh, it's going to be 17 in behind those Armos Knights. Well, we'll find out soon, Gristle. It's just probably about a minute or so from entering Ganon's Tower, and that's when we have to close the doors up to the guessing game. So if you haven't gotten your guess in, go ahead and get them in right now. Christos, out to open up Ganon's tower. At about one hour, 33 minutes, and 30 seconds. So, last few seconds to make your guesses. And that's it for the game. Of course, Christos deciding to swerve a little bit. Chest number one is a key, throws off ooh, a second key in okay. the right side, throws off all of the traditional pathing. Gonna go full right side now. All right, so my guess is already wrong. It's okay though. About to get three through six in just a little bit here. So, number three, number four, five, and six do not score today. Next, we're going to see the torch. Oof, Christos. So many extra falls. Okay, so we're actually not going to see it. We were maybe he feels behind still because of the Ice Palace play? And perhaps. That might be interesting. It'll be something to ask uh, at the end. 
I must say, this is one of the worst hallways. I think I hate it so much going that path. Yeah, I will have to agree with you. So my guess of 17 behind Ice Armos is not going to be where 17 is. Guess we can give half credit if it's behind Ice Armos then, since you guessed the location. Mm, no, it doesn't work like that. I'm okay. stickler for the rules. It's got to be 17. But first, we're going to get seven. seven. So, Bob. Not Guardian of the Key. Nope, not today. So we'll get 8 through 10 when we get rid of these ice armos. Very nice with the ice armos. 8, 9, and 10. Do not pay off. Alright, so we've got a couple rooms on the left side to go through, and if it's not there, we have 22, the tile room, but it's not 11, because we got three bombs up on the torch. So I believe 12, 13, 14, 15 are the Stalfos room. Mm -hmm. So, Fire Snake Room is where 17 is going to be, everyone. Just be be prepared. There's 14. And 15. <laughs> 16 here in Double Fire Bar. Nope. Cannon's gone wild, still looking for the boots. Looks like he's about to go to Hookshot Cave, though, so he will find those. So, number 17 here in Fire Snakes. Oh, just a small key. All right, so rando room. 18, 19, 20, and 21. Eighteen, nineteen, nineteen. Congratulations if you chose nineteen. Because that was where the big key was located. There it is. The Chain Nerd. Congratulations to you for guessing correctly. As we save your name forever to be emblazoned upon that leaderboard. It's somewhere down there, I imagine. At least until such time as we decide to reset it. Yeah, crazy amount of some people with a crazy amount of wins so far, but yeah, look at that—12 wins on Ravis there, impressive. And Ganon's gone wild, gets his boots. Christos is going to start his way up the gauntlet. Gone wild, picks up the cane of Samari. We'll see where he goes next now. So he's just looking for the ether medallion. Mm. 
Yeah, and we're hoping beyond hope that he goes to. Looks like he's gonna go to desert. Yep, he will go to desert first. I'm not sure if Crystals has any potions. I know that he has a fairy right now, though. So even if he takes a death, uh, it's not going to set him to the front of the tower yet. Nice play through the wizard's room. Wizard's robe room. Cannon's gone wild, leaving desert. I think he found the second item there, and he's checking the boots locations now. Christos with the rapid heartbeat. Just a couple more rooms, we'll see if he's... Yep, he's gonna check chest. There's a Tempered oh, Sword for him. luckily finding that Tempered Sword. You know, that's gonna feel good. Oh, it gets the bomb stuck on the wall there. And... Does not pick up that Anti-Fairy there before yeah. Toldorm. I wonder if he just feels that far behind that he doesn't have time to get his health back. <laughs> that, was, that was danger close. Yeah, Trolldorm being very aggressive up here. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Look at that, some anger slashes. How dare Trolldorm. Peace of Heart does not help him replenish his health at this point. As he heads up through this conveyor belt room, hopefully not going to hit anything along the way. Yeah, he makes it nice and safe. And we're on to Aghanim 2 for Christos Owen. Nope, Ganon's gone wild, came back to desert, so he must have just kind of skipped out of this. And we'll see, he finds the key there, we'll see if we see the second item. Oof, Christos, be careful. Down to one heart. Railing eating the normal Aganim's orb. Oof, down to half a heart. Half a heart. Blue balls. So dangerous. Gets Ooh. that uh, gets that third hit or that final hit just before I think that ball was going right for his face. Yeah, it certainly looked like it. Now my question is, is Crystal's going to go down the bottom of the pyramid and bonk that tree for that fairy? Or is he going to enter this with half a heart left? I think he's just going to go in. Because he's got a fairy in a bottle right now, and it wouldn't make sense to go all the way down that way to get the fairy when you skip the easy powders. Alright, and Christos on phase two of Ganon. Still with that half a heart. Ganon's gone wild is about to go back to the Line Mola's fight. Get some eye frames with the hook shot there. And he should safely be in a phase three now. Ooh, almost gets hit by the fire bat there. Three more hits to phase four and then four silver arrows is all that's left. Doing a little bit of dashing. Finally again and throwing up that last hit in phase three here. Cannon gone wild, takes down the Lanmolus, gets his map. Oh, 
Christos doesn't get the uh, torch glitch there and almost takes one from Ganon as a result. Ooh, almost just, got the triple. Yeah, just misses that triple. But with that, successfully concludes this fight. Dancing along the edge there. Got to be careful. That's a very dangerous three-tile wide bridge. Not to be taken lightly. Not at all. The final boss of the game. Mm -hmm. But he gets through and gets to the Triforce room. Absolutely. Claiming the victory here with an official Speed Racing TV time of 1 hour, 45 minutes, and 51 seconds. This timer was off just a little bit. But that puts him at two wins. And he will claim victory in this round of the bracket stages over again. It's gone wild. So let's throw those GGs up in the chat. Congratulations to Christos. And it looks as if uh, Games Gone Wild has seen that Christos has completed the race and has elected to retire from the matchup. So congrats to both players. On what was a, a really exciting matchup between these two across the two games. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, as you know, as stated, Crystal Souls winning the matchup 2 0. He will go on to the next round, and from what looks like the brackets, he is going to be up against Chisame next round. All right, it looks like we have Christos Owen actually in the waiting room, so we'll go ahead and bring him in. We're going to see if we can get Ganon's Gone Wild in here as well. And welcome to the channel, Christos. Congratulations, GG, and way to take that second victory. Yo, thank you. I feel like I crawled across the line on that one. <laughs> Wasn't the smoothest of games. Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, it was an exciting matchup. To be to be fair, um, we were noticing that it, it appeared as if you felt like things hadn't really gone your way. Um, could you tell us when you believe that uh, feeling took place? Or like what uh, it was? I would, it was hard for me to judge whether I was behind or not because I knocked out a lot of crystals early on, even though. I wasn't really finding many progression items after the initial batch. Um, but then when I went into Ice Palace, I <laughs> had such a kerfuffle there. Um, ended up doing a triple dip ice because I had no bombs, which was horrible, bootless to boot. Um, so yeah, I wasted a lot of time there. So I figured if the answer was Village of Outcasts or Thieves Town, that it was extremely likely um, the Ganon's Gone Wild had already been there and checked it, therefore that would have just compounded my loss. So I pretty much just decided to do everything but that. Um, and I was running out of options. After I did Spike Cave and Hookshot Cave, I was about to go do Desert Palace. And I was really starting to get worried. Uh, so, uh, as well, just a brief moment here to welcome Ganon's Gone Wild into the channel. Congrat or GG. Thanks for uh, putting on such a great race. Ah, uh, yeah, GG. Good game, oh, dude. Don't know about great, but it was a race. That's also how I feel about my performance. <laughs> yeah, since both of you kind of had a similar feeling, it's it's all evident. Um, you know, when you, if you guys choose to go back and watch this, you'll kind of have some face palm moments on both sides of the screen kind of taking place uh, along the way. Um, so it was not... Uh, was closer, I think, than uh, than it seems. Uh, again, and unfortunately, that uh, choice to not head up to Catfish uh, for that hook shot seems to have been the downfall for you. Uh, up until that moment, you guys were neck and neck. Really? I, I mean, I died like six times or something in that seed, so I felt like I was just had no chance at all. Yes, but you may have died, but as Christos was just mentioning to him. Uh, uh, he had the triple dip ice palace, so. <laughs> uh, 
slowed him down. He ran out of bombs. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't make bomb jumps. Couldn't do. It was things were not going well. So yeah, I, I ran out of bombs. I couldn't bomb jump the first time through, and then didn't have a way to get. So I couldn't bomb jump to the right side, and I didn't have a key to go to the right side. Uh, so I had to mirror. And then I went to the right side, and then because I still didn't have bombs, I also couldn't bomb jump. So then I tried to do the dungeon normally, but Colster had a key, so I didn't have a key to do like the loop, like after you hit the crystal switch in the basement you come back up and go back around and i got to the door and stuck and i was like all right okay so i have to go back through for a third time and boom jump and then finally finish it and i got rewarded with like 20 rupees well yeah it's a minor disaster <laughs> yeah it was pretty awful i made quite a few silly mistakes i tried going into the dark world without the moon pearl and then was just trapped behind the pegs as a bunny <laughs> Oh right, yes, uh, I had forgotten about that. You did go down to check out cave, picked up the uh, power or the Titans or power glove, and we're like, oh, yep, time to go to hype cave. Yeah, so like the early routing really worked pretty well. Like as soon as I found flute, I activated that, did Death Mountain and Hera, found a glove, and I was like, right, like Eastern is obviously the next place for me to go, but since I have the bow and the mirror, I'm gonna go and see if Pod is a crystal as well and do hype cave, and then just knock both of them out. And then try to get a hype cave, and was like, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> I don't have the pearl yet. Yes, yeah, so pearl, uh, actually this seed then, uh, that reminds me, a lot of single item locations were important, right? Zora there had the moon pearl, um, and as well, catfish with that hook shot, so kind of out of the way, a little bit trolly in certain cases, uh, considering that the rest of things were uh, kind of pushing you in a very linear path. Um, now my other uh, the other question is both of you uh, we'll start with you Christos uh, you go to Mini Moldorm Cave and get what amounts I think there was four out of the five items were incredible yeah uh, that's, how does that feel when that happens that was incredible yeah, yeah that was amazing um, it took me like a second to compute everything that I just got I was like okay so I just got the flute the bow and the silvers and was and the mirror i think is that what the other thing was um, yeah mirror yep. was there as well yeah that I was like is this are we back on version 18 what's going on here yeah that was pretty funny i mean i was like uh where do i even go after that like i think i initially was like gonna go to eastern because i'm like well i got the bow but then i changed plans at sahasrila and i was like actually let's just go to death mountain because i can do like the right side yeah, that's the same as me. Well, pretty much. But I'm guessing... So what was it that kind of held you up as such? Uh, I mean, I think that I just died, like... I probably lost, like, 10 to 15 minutes to... I died to, like, Mothula. I died in Escape, but I had the fairy. And then I died uh, to, like, a, one of those rock creatures on Death Mountain. I died uh -huh. to Helmsar King. And then I think I may have died like one other time randomly somewhere. Dang. Uh, but yeah. And then uh, I think I should have just rotted a little bit better and I could have probably rotted in catfish somehow. Uh, either after I did Pyramid Fairy or I could have probably done it with some kind of uh, like uh, do like the top side with mirror ledge and just keep going to the right once I got the flippers or something like that. Yeah, I mean, there really wasn't a great time to check Catfish. Um, I did it after Pyramid Ferry, because I figured I wasn't ever going to be back in the area, really. But yeah. yeah, I also just started taking some like crazy gambles, because I figured I was behind. So I just like went into Swamp without the hook shot and stuff like that. Ooh, ooh dang. That's painful. Unlike last time, there was absolutely nothing in Swamp, I think. But I feel like this was a reverse of the last seed because we had a green pen in Thieves Town on both of our races. And I decided to hit Thieves Town like straight away last time and got nothing at all. And then this time I was like, I'm not falling for the same bait and just didn't bother going there. And it worked out this time. Yeah, I actually did Thieves Town, and then uh, Green Pendant was Bombos, so I was like really hoping that that was required for like TR, but it ended up not being. Dang. 
I've been told that you found a sword in there, which was would have been nice. I didn't find my last sword until upstairs GT. Uh, yeah, I think that was in like the first chest or something like that. Well, I wish you luck. I hope you win the tournament so I could say that I'm the second best player and I just got an unlucky pairing. <laughs> Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm not too hopeful this time. Um, yeah, a bit rusty, but we'll see how it goes. I appreciate it, though. Thanks for the good races, though. It's been good fun. So, uh, Sir Lincoln, do you have any questions that you'd like to throw these guys away before uh, we wrap things up? Yeah, I guess. Uh, my question, Christos, with your Ganon Tower routing, was that because you might have felt a little behind with everything or just want to try something different? Uh, yeah, I really didn't know if I was behind on it, and when you don't mess up full right, it's actually kind of quick. Um, especially if like there was a sword or big key there. So I figured if I find either of those things doing full right, then it wouldn't be a complete waste. But in the end, it was just absolutely nothing, and <laughs> going left would have been way better. But I just kind of mix it up, I just, I don't know. I play it by ear each time and just see what I feel like doing in Tennis Tower. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those things, I guess, uh, you can just kind of see what happens and, and you don't really have a set plan going in uh, from time to time. And sometimes that pays off and sometimes you get this situation where you went all over the place just for uh, the random room key spot. Um, but with that, uh, we have wrapped up this round for you guys. Uh, congratulations once again, Christos, for making it through to the next stage in the brackets. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for commentating. Absolutely. And so if you are watching right now, uh, let me just give you one more reminder, if you'd like, and I strongly believe that you should, go ahead and follow both of these runners. Uh, they provided us with hours and hours of entertainment over the course of the tournament, and there are hours and hours left for us to do, so... It's the least you can do. Um, as well, I'd like to uh, throw up a little bit of love for Dusame, who was our tracker today, keeping all of the little buttons and lights at the bottom of the screen lit up. It helps both us to keep track of the action and as well, uh, give you an idea of what's going on if you come late. So thanks very much for doing that. And if you're interested in watching any additional link to the past randomizer there are some more games happening today uh right now coming up in about two or three or starting just about five or six minutes ago is korak versus selene on speed gaming four i can tell you that in their previous matchup this is a re-brace of their game two as they had a one second difference between the two of them had a tie uh, and were forced to replay that one uh as well, at 7.30, Giselle Shaft versus TGH happening on Speed Gaming 5. And then later on today, a couple of games taking place at 9 o'clock. Mentos Man 8 versus Amazing Ampharos on Speed Gaming 3. And in the event that uh, Korak and Thalane have to go one more time for a fourth matchup, that'll be taking place at 9 p.m. on Speed Gaming 4. So any final thoughts, Sir Lingalop, before we say goodbye to the folks? No, you know, just kind of the same. Echo you. Shout outs to everybody working behind the scenes. Shout out to Dusame for tracking, both to Christos Owen and Ganon's Gone Wild for putting on a good race for us. Um, and everybody here, if you're still here, thanks for watching. Cause we wouldn't be able to do this if you weren't here to watch it. Absolutely. Guys, have a good time. Have a good night. And hope to see you in the next race.